Welcome to the first episode of the Liquor Lab podcast. I'm Ryan Licker, and this is Liquor Lab. Uh, Abraham, how are you? I'm doing really good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, when we talked before we kicked these things off, you're like, you're on fire. I feel it, man. I feel it today. Everything's working. We got the semi-professional setup. And Liquor Lab is uh, a thing, isn't it? Yeah, you you definitely have a lot of passion today. I can hear it in your voice. I'm excited to see what uh, what interesting insights you can bring out today. Yeah, just to jump right in, the li- Liquor Lab is is the lab. It's building yourself. It's building better. It's creating. It's something that I have been working on for a long time. It's had different names. It's come across in different ways. All parts of the business have been individual ideas. And because of my conversation with you, everything has just come right together. I moved domains. I forward them to the liquorlab.com and it just goes to show that if you have that one idea, it's nece- it's not necessarily the end all be all. Like th- there could be more ideas to follow, and then when they all come together, it could be a whole bunch of ideas over the course of two, three years, ten years, fifteen years. I don't even know. All I know is that you and I connected, and I want you to take it from there. I mean, you're you're good at telling this part of the story. Yeah, that definitely. So my uh, initial. And my mom and I mentioned to her I wanted to move out to the New York City just to start my career and just get out of where I'm at right now. And she told me that she had a friend out there and that turns out that you're dating her friend of like 30 years. So then we got in touch. We started talking. And I think like, let's be clear, I'm not dating her for 30 years. No. It's yeah. The <laughs> friendship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we started talking and I think it was like three weeks in Ryan, was it like three weeks or how long was it? Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks that we finally, you know, had this rapport that we were just open and there was a lot of conversations. It it was, wasn't just about like moving to New York. There were just all these things entering into our conversations and yeah, about three weeks. And then we really started to everything started to come together. Yeah. So um, around that time frame, like that month time frame, you were talking to me on the phone and you were like, Abraham, uh, you need to see it from this perspective. You need to do this, do this, do that. And there were so many different ideas that you gave me. And I was like, Ryan, have you ever thought about doing this for a living, like making a podcast or uh, just consulting people and how to really be successful in your career when you're starting out. And it doesn't have to be just starting out or whatever, whatever. And you mentioned to me that you had this idea two years ago of this entity called One Day One. So t- can you tell me about how you started that and how that became Liquor Lab or however that went? Yeah, so about a, about two years ago, about a year and a half ago, maybe it was two years, who knows. I hired someone purely based on talent. They were great at not just being a designer, but they could animate. They didn't really have the solid, let's say basic design skills of like Photoshop and Illustrator. They had them and they could do the, they were sort of expert, but this, the animation and all these graphics that this this designer could do, I was like, I'm hiring him no matter what. Well, I came to realize very quickly that all, and, and this is for most young people. And yes, I am going to generalize. Let me make, let me make one thing clear. We are not, we're here to have a conversation. We're not like fact checkers or anything. So I made a huge generalization. Uh, it's proving me right every day that most young people are subject matter experts. They are hyper-focused in design, hyper-focused in whatever they do, engineering, um, they do not have these ancillary and intangible skills to, that they develop throughout th- the first job they ever get as like as a 16 year old all the way through to their final destination as a professional. They are slotted into this path and swim lane of I'm going to be a designer. So I started taking notes, even down to not executing, but what to wear because there was a lot of issues with it. Oh, my God. There was so many issues with what this guy wore to, wore to work. I told them to wear a jacket He because they wanted, there were a lot of clients and they're doing, the, the company I was working for was doing, you know, $500 million, billion dollar deals in real estate. And they wanted people to look 
presentable in the office when they took a client from point A to the conference room. And I told, I told the guy, I go, I go, bro, listen, you know, just, you know, put on a jacket. When you sit down at your desk, you can take it off or leave it on. I don't care. Just put on a jacket when you walk around. The dude walked in with a tuxedo jacket. I swear to God. I call him over to my desk. I'm like, um, you got to, <laughs> you, you, you have a, are you, you going to be in a wedding party after <laughs> He he has the work, a, work ends at five and then he has a wedding at 6 30. So I go, are, you, are you are you emceeing the uh the Johnny Sweet 16 to after hours or something? So it was where what to wear, how to write an email, how to address people, just how to feel out your first few days and how to have the skills from day one with um when you start your job so that was the name of it win day one conquer day one of the first day of your professional career so i had all these things uh, like i'm saying so it's dress emails um how to communicate with coworkers, just when to ask for things how to ask for things just picking your spots as a new employee and coming prepared with these skills that you should have honed through, you know, working retail, then you're working in the service industry, and then you go to college and you're having another job while you're in college. And you're just, not only are you going out there and you're meeting people and learning about different people in different sectors and from all parts of wherever you live or wherever you travel to in your local area where you have that job, you're, you're just building a intangible skill set of working with people, all these things that this guy did not have at all. So when day one, when day one of your professional career, I had that idea, bought the what, bought the URL, set it up, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And of course, because work is work, I got super, super busy. And it kind of just fell by the wayside. COVID Corona hit, I I put up a website for it. And then I just didn't, it didn't have this feel for me. So as you were saying, we, we connected and we started talking about the process. And, you know, you know, you said about you, your friends wanted to know who you were talking to. And I was, and, and you were like, Hey, maybe you could talk to one of them. And I was like, Oh my God, I go, this might sound like bullshit, but I actually had this idea to coach. Now, granted, it wasn't in this early before you have the job stage, but why can't it be that? So I told you I had this idea when day one and you were like, wow, that is awesome. We need to get out there. We need to talk to people. I have a friend that that is interested in talking to you. Now that aside, I at the time was building a marketing agency and I was like, why can't my marketing agency, the Liquor Lab, come together with win with win day one? Why can't it just be part of the Liquor Lab experience? And sure enough, that's what I did. I forwarded RyanLiquor.com. I forwarded um Sorry, redirected for all you technical people out there. Redirected RyanLinker.com. Redirected Day1.com. Redirected them both to, to um, the liquor or liquor lab and added a career consulting section, worked, you know, took on a client, just built it out. And this is what it's all about. It's all about not your first day of work, but it's about getting you to building a road to somewhere. I, I mean, You know, I go off and I go on these rants, but this is what it's about. It's about being passionate about what you're doing and not just building a road, but building a road to a destination and then building a new road from that destination to another destination. I I always tell you, Abraham, I don't have, I I don't want to hold your hand. I don't want to be your mommy. I'm kind of rough when it comes to people when, you know, when I expect, I expect the best out of you every day. And you know that, you've learned that, and I, that's what Liquor Lab is about. It's about bringing the best and helping you see clearly. No, I definitely learned that the hard way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, working with you really opened my eyes and made me commit to projects. Uh, worked, I had to work with a lot more urgency than usual. Um, and that's something that you have really, really, really have emphasized is the idea of committing and working with urgency. Did you develop that through your career or did you just come with the, up with that like on the fly? Well, throughout my career, urgency has been ingrained in me. Just following up, being okay. on top of things, being on top of things, just 
everything you're doing, you are accountable for. So disappearing or not saying, oh, there's a problem here and just hoping it goes away. I've done all the work for everyone. So part of the Liquor Lab is that I've had so much experience. You could show your resume to two resume experts. They'll give you two ultra left view and the ultra right view. They will not agree on what the best presentation of a resume is. They won't agree. A lot of people won't agree on things, but I've had that experience dealing with all types of people, all types of jobs from a paper route to working three days as a waiter. It's just not for me. I was able to say this job is not for me. So just all this experience I'm able to bring to other people so they could accelerate their careers where things that I've done and the lessons that I've learned have set me back in my progression. And I have come up late. I've had all these ideas. I haven't really stuck to one and grown it and then pivoted. I've, I've just been scatterbrained until now, until, until the liquor lab and working with urgency, getting back to that. It's just being on point, following up, communication, not letting things go that you don't want to talk about. One of the things you got to talk, if you're going to be a professional as well and be very successful, you have to deal with failure. You have to, when you fail, you have to raise your hand and say, I failed here. And this is how I'm going to solve it. You know, I've, as cliche as it sounds, like I want solutions. I don't want to know you messed up. I want to know you messed up and how you're going to fix it because you knew you learned from that. Learning urgency is not just working ahead of schedule. It's letting people know that you're on it, working with a drive. And I, it's a real cornerstone of everything I'm communicating and, and what I'm doing today with the liquor lab and helping others. And then going back, I didn't, I didn't know you were a waiter. I couldn't, couldn't imagine you being my waiter. That would be kind of intimidating because you're definitely very passionate about it. <laughs> but so yeah, dude, were... I was not, I, <laughs> I am not built for a waiter. I mean, maybe I could do it better now, but at the time I was someone who was very deliberate about things. It, it was too quick. I, I was not as, it's all about confidence. Let's bring that up. I was not as confident as I am now that I could go in there and say, I'm going to be the best waiter. I was like, this shit is not for me. I'm, I don't see a way out of here. I rather bust tables and, and get tip share. <laughs> no, it definitely. And then being like having these little jobs like teaches you so much about confidence. Like I actually was a server at a pizza place and going in my first couple of weeks, I was making no money because I wasn't confident. I wasn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't being outgoing with the customers and I wasn't upselling anything. And then a month in, I was just running tables and making the most tips in the whole restaurant. And that happened because I put myself out there. I was confident and I just learned a new task. And that confidence that I learned from being a server honestly has been probably the best thing to happen to me because now I'm super smooth in a in an interview or any type of uh, conversation just because I had to talk to so many people. So it's pretty cool to be able to Talk about these small little jobs that we had and how that's really helped us grow. Someone told me a long time ago, and listen, I've, spe- I've, I've had influence and opinions and advice from all people all across the world, all different, some similar. But one thing is every job you take, whether, and in the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, I had to work at Walmart. I had no other option. I had to work at Walmart. Someone had just being humble. Every job you have, you're going to learn something from that job that you're going to carry to your final destination and your your career goals. And for instance, when I worked at Saks Fifth Avenue, when I was in college and out of college, I learned to deal with really tough customers and really difficult situations where they want to return something. And you know, it's a, they're, they, they wore it out the night before because they didn't want to really pay full freight. And then they want to return it after the night out. You have to deal, you, you have to, Put yourself in these situations that just better you. Uh, if you want to be the ultimate deal maker, you got to learn customer service and different how people do business and different cultures. You just have to learn. And what I realized later on and what a lot of people aren't realizing today is that everything is an aggregate for your final destination in, in, in your professional and personal life. I'm not talking about final destination. You're dying. I'm saying like final destination, you're, you're, you're ulti- where you see yourself, where you're going to build your path to. 
It's super, super important that you're learning, even if you have the worst job. I've had horrible bosses. I've had great experiences. I fucked up a lot of times, but I've learned all the way through, even though I was like, damn, that was a terrible job. And that's so lost today. People People quit in two seconds because they just give up. I never gave up. Until in, until you tell me to leave, I, I'm going to work for this company as passionate as ever. And then something that you talked about was um, how you had to be humble. Even if you had like the worst job in the world and you had to scrape gum off the, the bottom of a table or something. I don't think any job is above anybody. And if, let's just say, right out of college, you get the worst job ever, you have to try to make sure that you do the best that you can do at that job. That way you're given more responsibility and they know that how hard you're willing to work, even if it's a small task or a large task. So being humble, like you mentioned, is definitely one of the major cornerstones that needs to be really like exemplified in any scenario. Yeah, there's the, being humble is something I communicate to everyone I, I, I've talked to when it comes to career consulting. Just be humble. You're not above anything. I've been an asshole to people. I've had battles with people, especially <clears throat> in my MBA. When I took my MBA at Fordham, when I got it, the experience was over two years with the same class through two years. And I've I've always been the leader and always directed and, and presented. And there were a few times I was really upset because putting all these type A's in one room where everyone wants to lead and everybody thinks they're, they're, they deserve to lead the group. There were a few people who were type A's like stealth. But it just taught me a lot. And it taught me a lot after the fact. I didn't know how great the experience was until I reflected on how big of an asshole, how I wasn't humble, and how I learned from those experiences. Matter of fact, um, on a future podcast, I wanted to have on one of my classmates from that, from Fordham, because him and I battled. We had a real issue. And it was just who's, it was so childish, but we needed that experience to get to where we are, where we are and where we're going. It, it's, it's all about being humble and knowing your role and saying, I'm in a group, I'm in a team, I'm going to, I'm going to have confidence in my team and, and people doing things. And the liquor lab is so, is, is, is like preaching these values, humble, urgency, be, be kind, be and be a great person. And that's your own definition of a great person. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how to be a great person. I'm just going to give you basic foundation values that you will be a good person because you have these. Teach people. Learn how to coach people. I know you wanted to focus on coaching and some of the some of the foundations in coaching. So let me throw it back to you on coaching so you could set that up. Yeah, definitely. So you have a lot of history coaching. Um, I know you were a baseball coach. I think you were a basketball coach. And I think so you mentioned that I didn't coach basketball. Didn't oh, you didn't. Basketball. Okay. Okay. So no basketball coaching, but you watched a lot of basketball, right? Yeah, I watched a lot of 90s basketball where today and I know you don't like this, but LeBron James is the softest superstar that <laughs> ever wore an NBA uniform. Scotty Pippen would put an elbow into his mouth as soon as he tried to. I don't even know if LeBron could get down the lane. It's like Matador defense. It's like, ole, come down the lane and just do what you want. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, <laughs> so, yeah, changing that subject. So, when I grew up, I was a huge Bulls fan living in New York, a Jordan fan. I just watched this man get the absolute best. Even I lived this Jordan, the uh, Bulls documentary. That was my childhood. My Nick fan friends used to try to find me in school. I mean, I, I think I, I fought my best friend over the Knicks and Bulls. Alex, I'm sorry. But the Knicks were up 2-0 and I got pissed. But we ended up winning 4-2. Yeah, so just Jordan's mentality of this. I am going to deliver the highest level of competitiveness, drive, and give a hundred percent at all times. And I'm going to expect that back from people. So this ties in again. I, I'm going to give you all that. You have to give it back to me or this isn't going to work. And, and if you're not giving that, you're going to hear about it. So just that type of coaching is coaching that is, it's old school. It's, it's not white glove. It's raw and it works. It's worked for a long time. And I know Abraham, you've experienced it with me. But when you when you are making the same mistake or not seeing it clearly, I'm not trying to be your best friend. I'm trying to get the best out of you. 
the best teams and the best experiences in business are with people who are really not your friends and you're driving towards a greater good or for success for the company or the KPI they're hyper-focused on. No one has to be friends. You just have to have common interest in where you're taking everyone. No, definitely. And then that type of coaching, it's really old school. And being exposed to it from you really was like, whoa, it was like a kind of a shell shock. Like it, I wasn't expecting it. And after receiving the Jordan coaching, if you will, <laughs> I definitely, definitely did not make the same mistakes again. And I was and it started to kind of like rub off on me that mentality that you've given in your coaching. And it started to rub off on a client of yours as well, who is a good fr friend of mine. And I definitely think that there's something to be said about that because it produces great measurable results that you can see not just in your professional life, but in your day to day life. And it's definitely a, a great different way of coaching that you don't see very often today. Like talking about passion and drive, that's not something that you can pick up and read in a book. And it's something you have to ingrain into your lifestyle. And you've definitely done that. And the company culture revolves around that same idea as well. Abraham, we all have it in us. It's all in us. I cannot, if you don't have the coordination to play the guitar, I don't have it. I don't have that coordination. When, when the baseball was, when the pitcher was throwing the baseball above 74 miles an hour, baseball was over for me, unless you wanted me to bunt every time. And you know, when I started to make do, I started to bunt a little, and then I realized that I'm not going to catch it. My, my one friend's hitting home runs every pitch and I'm just like, yeah, Yo, you want to tone that down a little? I need to bunt or something. So it's about knowing your strengths and I'm not going to teach you to play the guitar if you don't have that coordination. I'm not going to send you to a guitar lesson if you don't have that coordination. It's about knowing your strengths, picking your spots. And with your friend, my client, he had this in him. He just needed to hear it, number one, and he needed to take off the blinders. I know you you always talk about that. Just removing the blinders. Just because you're a nurse practitioner or, or you want to be in the healthcare field doesn't mean you're not open to other opportunities. You could sell medical devices. They might need a certified physician's assistant uh, to sell a certain device or be on a sales team or lead a sales team or have knowledge of, of a product at, at, what are they called? I don't know. One of these healthcare firms, they need they need people like that. So just removing the blinders, seeing what's going around, seeing what's going on in the economy. First thing I tell, I, I ask uh, any of my clients, I say, anyone who's taken the Liquor Lab experience, you know, let's call it the experience, the Liquor Lab Consulting it's experience. An experience. It's an experience yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, I say, I say, do you know what's going on in the stock market? Do you know when the jobs report comes out? Do you know what's going on in the economy? Do you know... What policies are there? What's on the floor? What's happening outside of what CNN, Fox News, and all these other outlets are telling us that are trying to polarize us? Have you done your own research? Have you pulled up the stats in the market? Because the numbers don't lie. Are you doing that? I've asked... I asked that first because it just get, it just starts to take off the blinders. What's going on in, in the tech sector, energy? What happens if there's oil now that uh, we were shut down for a little bit or we weren't moving as much with planes and automobiles, you know, the oil price drop. You know, and when I was your age, Abraham, the price per barrel was over $100 per barrel for oil. Now it's, I think it's $39 and that's up from a low. So just knowing what's around you, what's happening, not just operating with blinders. And a lot of people do that. And it turn, And let me tie it all the way back to when day one, that original concept is today's youth is too indoctrinated in their own lane. Stay in your, I hear this all the time, stay in your lane. You know, sometimes I have to, I have to Google when one of my younger friends sends me like a abbreviation not lol i'm not that old but i remember when they give i remember me, that happened with you and me too i had you I, I sent you like on my way or i'll let yeah, you know i was like me. what are you i go you gotta help me out here i don't feel like googling so just things things like that everybody's in their lane you we need to get you necessarily don't have to leave your lane you have to see the lanes next to you and that's what the liquor lab and this whole initiative is all about now abraham i'm gonna i'm gonna throw you a question right now when, when we had our initial talks, what part of the process for you stood out the most? What, what was something to, to you that has resonated other than the things that I've talked about so far? Great question. Um, to come to mind, the first thing that definitely 
kind of shocked me. I didn't, I wasn't expecting to have this question. You mentioned it earlier, but you asked me what the stock market price was and all of this. And I was like, I have absolutely no clue. And now you and me talk every single day about, oh, did you see what this closed at? Or did you see what it opened at? And I saw you made money today because of whatever. But something that stood out to me was definitely the passion and urgency that you worked with and being able to see that there are opportunities out there. And if you're not looking for them, you're not going to find them. Like my LinkedIn, for an example, was a abysmal it looked terrible and then you were like hey have you done this this and this let me see your linkedin and then that's like definitely something that for me was probably most beneficial because i realized how important making the connections were out there and i honestly got to see that the opportunities were out there and my blinders were kind of removed i was mainly going to the company websites for the job applications and all of this and you were like hey why don't you reach out to somebody on the team and see if they can hook you up so having that outside of the box thinking was incredible to be able to see and I wouldn't have realized that on my own. That's great. It's it's super important that you realize that you have a network. One thing, re- the reason why I chose Fordham to get my MBA is Fordham has a huge network. So when I first graduated, I was reaching out to all these people from Fordham. They'd always get back to me. They would always get back to me and they'd be so honest about the process. Um, it was great. And that's what I tried to tell you. You have to come up with, you're basically dealing with one major piece of marketing another dialogue and then a presentation of yourself in a form of a letter that just is really concise and presents yourself. And when I looked at your profile and the way you the way you set yourself up and listen, some people I don't have all the answers today. I'm still learning. So you you always have to be able to make that change and getting getting into the the whole idea of just knowing that you're not limited there are other ways there it's not just applying to companies but leveraging what you have you went to a university i went to fordham you go to your university there's people out there doing what you're doing that you could reach out to and they want to talk i don't know if they want to talk as much as i do but they but they I, I don't think anybody talk. i don't think anybody I'm, wants to do that <laughs> okay stop it um okay but yeah, they, I agree with you. And I just, I'm, this is it. I'm passionate about this shit. What do you want? I could go on forever. Someone asked me if this is a one man podcast. I said, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah. You got to listen throughout the whole thing. I'll, I'll yeah, exactly. jump in there every, there uh, are, every 10 minutes. I swear to you, there is someone else out there. But yeah, it's just, it's just redefining a process, redefining your approach, taking something and say, hey, these are the things that everyone hands me. There's something else out there. And believe me, you might not discover it on your own, but always keep your eyes open to what is out there, how to reach out to people, how to leverage your network that you might even not know you have because you went to a university. It's not like you're friends with them, but you have that common connection. You have that that link to this to this person that could help you. Remember, in statistics and data, you are not the first person to experience what you're experiencing. Other people have had issues, whether it's, you know, if you were the only person who ever needed money, there'd be no financial lending. You know what I'm saying? So there are finding there are tools out there to help you. You just got to go find them because in statistics and data, the odds are you can reasonably assume that you are not the only one experiencing what you're experiencing. The answers are out there. You just got to go find them. And in the case of Liquor Lab, we are helping people find their destination and then helping and also helping them build that that road and that path to that destination. It might be a short path to start and you get to the destination. But we're going to keep building knowing where we're headed. That's the key. Know where you're headed. Great points. Um, And I think that you touched based on all of the important topics that we wanted to talk about today. What can our listeners be expecting in future podcasts and uh, services that we're going to be providing? Well, as you know, we're super, super excited about this podcast. We've been excited about it. I actually, on the day one website, I have. I had, this is how you brought up a a podcast, Abraham. This is how you brought it up. You saw the day one website when I first told you about it and you said, you do a podcast. I'm like, man, I just, I just, I want to do one. He's like, and you're like, we should do one. So we're doing this podcast because we want to just touch on a whole bunch of topics. We want to touch on topics about developing yourself, whether that's one topic per show, two topics, 
but just that that process and then also the day one topics you're you got the job how do you approach what to wear on the first day so you're not overly casual and you're not overdressed how to put together a proposal how to show an owner of a company or your direct report a quote for something comparing quotes just all these topics. And one of the main things I want to focus on that's really important to me is I know a lot of entrepreneurs that have started from nothing, have tried many things, and their insights and their stories about how they, some of them are still on their path, but how they got to where they are, how they made a name for themselves, and how they continue to grow and grow and grow. And that is what we're excited about, we're excited most importantly about helping helping others through the Liquor Lab Consulting offering. We're ready for you. We can't wait. If you go to liquorlab.com or liquorlab.com slash career consulting, sign up, drop us a line, uh, Facebook Messenger. You'll find our Instagram. We're on all channels, all platforms. And we're just super excited. I don't know if you can hear it, but we're, we're really excited about tackling all these things about the workplace, your career, career path, and just how to win day one of your career uh, in perpetuity, on and on, get to where you're going. Anything else, Abraham, before we wrap it up? No, I'm just so excited to be able to be part of this journey with you. And um, I'm honestly most excited about hearing from all these entrepreneurs and all the lessons that they can teach. I know that yeah. we're having your cousin come on one yeah. of these podcasts. Jason right? Licker, I uh, just self-published a bo- his second book, Baking with Liquor. You can find that at jasonlicker.com or you could actually buy it off of liquorlab.com if you wait for the image to pass of the Baking with Liquor logo. Click it, goes right to a site. And that'll do it. Thank you for tuning into episode one of the Liquor Lab podcast. I pressed the wrong button at the end and it cut everything off, but we were pretty much wrapping up. See you in episode two.